Think about your own grandparents. Back in the day, people were a lot more self-reliant. They knew how to take care of themselves and their loved ones, just like my grandfather did. Many from their generation would probably scoff at how modern people immediately run to the doctor for every small cut and bruise which can easily be fixed at home. Or how much we pay for health care we don't really need. Today, I want to show you some common sense ways to manage most health conditions from the comfort of your own home. I'm talking about simple things like relieving pain, stopping a wound from bleeding, applying a stitch, managing blood pressure and blood sugar, calming down a racing heart, keeping your memory in great shape and clearing an infection, boosting your immunity, controlling stress levels, and many, many more. When I was a boy, my mother wouldn't take me to see a doctor for every small scratch I got playing in the park. If I fell and hurt my knees, she wouldn't sue the park like some modern folks do. People back in the day were a lot more responsible. They lived in the real world. Today, we've become increasingly disconnected from it. We stand to pay the ultimate price for this folly when the system fails. But this forgotten wisdom is not only reserved for dark times. These methods are nothing fancy, but they will probably save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on unnecessary doctor's appointments over the next few years. It will also make you less dependent on a vulnerable medical system. We never know what the future holds, and what we find normal today, like going to the pharmacy or hospital, might be gone tomorrow. Please listen carefully to this free advice as one day it may help you or someone you love. I recently got in, in touch with a frontline doctor working in a country that's been dealing with hardship and shortages for years and has yet, yet to recover. The truth is, if you want to see what happens during hard times, all you have to do is look at Venezuela. No electricity, no running water, no law, no antibiotics, no painkillers, no anesthetics, no, no insulin, no nothing. But if you want to find out how you can still manage in a desperate situation, situation like this, you must also look to Venezuela and learn from the handful of people who cope despite widespread medical shortages of every kind. Dr. Maybell is one of them. She's a general surgeon at Caracas University Hospital. People over there had to discover new ways to take care of their own health care once pharmacies ran dry and, and, and hospitals overflowed with patients. In this short presentation, I'll show you three things I've learned from her that will help you take care of yourself and your family during dark times. It may help you slash some medical costs starting today. Each one is important, but the third one is absolutely astonishing. I would have never thought about it and guessed how effective it is. Hi, my name is Claude Davis. I'm an old-fashioned guy who some people like to call a prepper, but I'm not one of those those folks you see on TV preparing for a zombie apocalypse. I do prepare for an uncertain future, but I like to do it as our grandparents did. When nearly every household canned food for winter, saved rainwater and wooden barrels, and grew natural remedies in their own backyard. The first of the three things I want to share with you is probably hard to believe, that when everything is still okay in our country, but the simple truth is that once society starts to break down, going to a hospital can be a very bad idea. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, a lot of people were left without a home, food, electricity, or running water. But some still had all these things because they had prepared for such an event. My friend Tom was one of them. He had at least three months worth of food and water and brand new generator that could power his entire home because Tom thought he had everything he needed at home and because his house was on high ground, he decided to stay and weather out the storm. During the hurricane, a small wooden splinter flew inside through a broken window and pierced his hand. It was just a tiny wound. It wasn't really deep and he thought he could manage it at home. He bandaged the wound with what he still had in his first aid kit and went to sleep that night. A few days later, he woke up in a cold sweat. His finger was pulsating and he could tell an infection was taking hold. What you want to do in this kind of situation, other than disinfecting the wound, is to immediately take some antibiotics. Unfortunately, Tom didn't have any stockpile because, as you know, they require a prescription. 
In a minute, I'll show you a way around that, but which people in Venezuela discovered after they ran out of antibiotics. Over the next couple of days, Tom's situation went from bad to worse. He began to run a constant high fever, and he barely had the energy to crawl out of bed. Every time he called 911 to ask for an ambulance, he always got a busy tone because, well, probably because the hospitals in the area lost power, were already overcrowded with hundreds of sick and injured people. The roads were also not accessible yet by car. By the time my friend reached a hospital, his hand had swollen to the size of a football, and he was in great pain. As he desperately tried to get to the front of the line, he almost fainted a few times and had to be propped up by others. Tom told me he was one of the lucky ones who managed to see a doctor before it was too late. The doctor examined his hand and prescribed some antibiotics. Things were on the mend, but then an unforeseen problem came up. Overcrowded hospitals with lackluster sanitation and hygiene are the perfect breeding environments for germs. Tom's already weakened body picked up another, more aggressive bacteria that didn't respond to the usual treatment. I know firsthand that in the US, hospital administrators are pulling their hair out, wondering how to reduce hospital-acquired infections. The rate can be alarmingly high. In a crisis, you might have a much better chance of picking up an infection in a hospital than if the doctor performed the procedure in your own bedroom. At least at home, you have germs that you've developed an immunity against, and they're usually not resistant to every antibiotic known to man. After lying in a hospital bed for weeks on end, pumped full of intravenous antibiotics, Tom finally began to recover. The doctors were able to save his life. Others were not so fortunate, and despite what the media and government would have you believe, the greatest number of casualties after Katrina were not caused by the flooding itself, but by the infections in the medical crisis that followed. That's why every person should have some antibiotics stockpiled at home. In a crisis, it may be too late to find out what you really need, or doing so might put you in harm's way. If Tom would have had just a few antibiotics at home, he would have never had to leave his house. How do you stockpile enough life-saving antibiotics without a prescription? When there were no more antibiotics in hospitals and pharmacies across Venezuela, doctors there discovered fish and bird antibiotics could be used to treat their patients. Believe it or not, they have the same active substances found in human antibiotics. Every capsule of fish mox, for example, contains nothing but 250 milligrams of amoxicillin, the same substance found in amoxicillin capsules for humans. A substance is a substance, after all. Most importantly, they don't require a prescription. You can order a month's supply for just $10 online or from a pet store almost anywhere in America. Plus, you can stockpile as many of them as you please because they keep good for years. If one day you're life or the life of someone you love were to depend on it, how would you feel knowing you could still have this ace in the hole? Of course, you should always take human antibiotics if they're still available and only after consulting a doctor. I also don't advise taking antibiotics for every minor problem. I probably only used them four or five times in my life. Now I suspect that you, like many other people, have a small medicine cabinet at home and Maybe it's not fully stocked, but at least you have some painkillers, an anti-inflammatory, or some other medication you need in there. Just imagine that's all gone tomorrow and you can't buy anymore. What will you do? My guess is that sooner or later, you'll do what they did in Venezuela. You will turn to the medicinal plants growing in your backyard or in a nearby forest or park. They have so much more to offer than you might think, but it isn't until people run almost out of medicine completely that they realize that. If you don't know this already, many of the medicines on the market today are still derived from substances found in common plants. Aspirin is made from the bark of the willow tree, and with the right knowledge, you can extract it yourself to lower a fever or fight pain and inflammation. The flu medicine known as Tamiflu is derived from a plant called the star anise. About 90% of the world's star anise crop is used to make Tamiflu. 
an alkaloid from this tree was discovered to be effective against malaria and light cramps. Today we call the drug quinine. You can find it at the retail price of $218 at Walgreens. And this fungus contains a powerful immunosuppressive substance that can ameliorate symptoms of multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune conditions. The derived drug today is called Jelenia, and 30 capsules will set you back around $9,000. And the list goes on and on, and that's why even today, one of the most expensive things that you can buy on the black market in Venezuela is not food or guns, but medicinal plants. In America, these wild plants are still widely available, so my advice is to forage or buy the ones that you need and won't be able to find at the pharmacy anymore. Still, the greatest problem that you'll face in a crisis will be the absence of doctors and other medical experts. So chances are, during dark times, you probably need to take your health into your own hands. As the economic collapse worsened in Venezuela, so did the medical situation. Many were left waiting in line for hours on end to see an overworked doctor who had almost nothing left to treat them with. Similar things happened after Katrina ravaged New Orleans and people died needlessly in hospital hallways, waiting for someone to give them the time of day. What people really need and what could save families like yours and mine in the next crisis are a few inexpensive but carefully selected medical supplies and the right knowledge to use them. The truth is, you don't need to see a doctor or be a doctor yourself to take care of most common health problems. I'm, not, I'm talking about the simple ones, not performing brain surgery. So wouldn't you want an expert to guide you on the right path, to tell you exactly what to keep in your medicine cabinet, and to teach you a few simple do-it-yourself methods to take care of your own health at home? I hope the answer is yes, because that's what I can do for you today. I've come to believe that in dark times, most people will not have access to a hospital while infection rates soar. You won't be able to buy medicines at the pharmacy and they won't be able to consult a doctor when they need to. But Dr. Maybell's invaluable help, I was able to determine exactly what medicines and medical supplies a person has to keep at home to help themselves and their loved ones in times of need. And the minor but life-saving procedures that can be performed safely without ever having to set foot outside your front door. I asked Maybell to write everything down in a guide so that anyone can take advantage of these bits of knowledge when they're needed the most. It's called The Home Doctor, practical medicine for every household. You can use it whenever hospitals become overwhelmed and, and dangerous or to help yourself or a loved one while awaiting an ambulance to arrive. Inside, you'll also discover the medicinal plants that you can use, as well as the medical supplies, Western medicines, and do-it-yourself procedures that you need to keep by your side. So I hope that you'll be wise enough to take advantage of everything we've painstakingly saved for you, from the practical day-to-day -day medical experience of a frontline doctor working in a collapsed medical system and country. Let me show you just some of the things you'll find inside the home doctor. One of the first things you'll discover is which 10 medical supplies you need to stock up on before it's too late. These are not expensive and should still be available, but they tend to run out fast. In case you haven't realized it yet, most of the medical supplies and pills we take for granted come from China and India. When things go bad, that supply chain will stop working and you'll be left with only what you have on hand after the pharmacies run dry. One of the 10 vital supplies you need in your house is a painkiller called naproxen, which is over the counter, and a lot more powerful than ibuprofen, for example. In Venezuela, electricity has turned into a rare and unpredictable commodity. They don't have it all the time, and blackouts have become a normal part of daily life. If you're preparing for the worst case scenario, then you must expect frequent blackouts. Inside the home doctor, you'll also learn about the biggest medical mistakes that you can make in a blackout, and what to do with important medications that require refrigeration like insulin or Humira. Do you know how to recognize if you or someone you love is having a heart attack? 
There are many conditions that mimic it. So how do you really determine if you're having a life-threatening cardiac event? Look at its four distinctive symptoms. First, chest discomfort that feels like uncomfortable pressure, squeezing, fullness, and pain in the middle of your chest that lasts for more than a few minutes. The second symptom is discomfort or pain in one or both arms, in your back, your neck, jaw, or stomach. The third symptom is shortness of breath. The last thing you need to watch out for is breaking out in a cold sweat, nausea, and lightheadedness. These don't all come at once, but if you see even one or two, it's time to call 911. Another step you can take to improve your chances before the ambulance arrives is to chew on an aspirin and pour a vial of nitroglycerin under your tongue. But you need to have these two items at home beforehand. No country in the world has had to use more expired medication than Venezuela. Dr. Maybell and other doctors were able to see what happens firsthand and it's almost guaranteed to shock you to the core. Most medications you have in your medicine cabinet are good for years after their bogus expiration dates. So pay close attention to this chapter before you throw away your so-called expired medications. As one day you might need it badly. You'll also learn about the only four antibiotics you should stockpile at home, now to get them legally without a prescription. They contain distinctive substances that act very, very differently so while it could happen that you stumble upon a bacteria that is resistant to one of them, the chance it can withstand all four is very, very slim. Antibiotics will become priceless in times of need once they become scarce. Having them at home for you and your family is at least as important as having food stockpiles. Another thing you'll discover is the best natural painkiller that probably grows in your own backyard. This is the painkilling plant that many in Venezuela turned to after they couldn't find relief at the pharmacy anymore. And it grows all over North America as well. You'll also learn how to deal with shortages of medicines such as insulin, which some people need to take every day. A friend of mine from Texas found a workaround and is able to get all the insulin he needs daily and even extra to stockpile. His ingenious method is completely legal and safe. You could start using it immediately not only for insulin, but also for some other medicines that are notoriously hard to stockpile. When dealing with a stroke, time is of the essence, and every second counts. If you act quickly, most of the time, your body can recover completely. Alternatively, many people end up partially paralyzed or even worse. Inside the home doctor, you'll also learn the fastest way you can recognize it, and the one thing you must do immediately to improve your chances. You'll also find out how to make your own batch of anesthetic to use whenever a painful procedure is necessary. All the ingredients can be ordered online without a prescription. Make sure you produce enough as this stuff tends to run out when things go south and not to mention that other people in pain will be willing to trade an arm and a leg for it. I'll also show you the only probiotics you need to keep in your medicine cabinet the truth is most probiotics today are, are next to useless and some are even harmful. Probiotics are basically microorganisms that live inside your gut and influence your metabolism and overall health. They can even trigger allergies. Their effects are so widespread that you don't want to take the wrong probiotics and risk messing up your gut flora even more. I personally know people who gained a lot of weight taking bad probiotics. A good probiotic, on the other hand, can make all the difference. It will improve your digestion, help you get rid of gas, absorb the maximum amount of good nutrients from the food you eat, and take care of both diarrhea and constipation. During the flu season, a lot of people end up in the hospital with a high fever, coughing their lungs out. So one of the things I want to give you is a simple protocol to deal with it at home. If going to a hospital is off the table, or you just don't want to go to a doctor for a simple flu. You'll discover how you can make your own cast at home. If you break a leg or arm, you'll need to keep it immobilized for a few weeks to allow the bones to fuse back. This is the best way to do it. In Chapter 3, Skin and Skin Appendages, you'll find out all you need to know to manage conditions of the skin, such as corns, warts, athlete's foot, 
burns and scalds, dermatitis, fungal infections of the nails, insect bites and stings, abscesses, ulcers or open wounds, you name it. You'll also discover why you should put egg whites on second degree burns, but over the counter medicines and creams to stockpile for your skin, the exact process of cleaning, stitching and treating an open wound at home. You'll also learn about the little known body signs that tell you if you have hidden inflammation inside your body at this very moment. You'll find out how I deal with my back problems. Until I found this one minute stretch routine, I often woke up like a hunchback, could barely walk to the bathroom. And it usually took me several hours to become functional again. If this sounds at all familiar to you, you shall learn this simple move. You'll find out how to brew your own batch of Neosporin. An antibiotic ointment is nice to have. Besides stockpiling some from the pharmacy, you should consider this option as well. Not to mention it's a lot cheaper and probably just as effective. The recipe found inside the home doctor is packed with anti-germ properties, which will aid in keeping a wound from becoming infected and help reduce scarring. As a woman, after a certain age, you should definitely know how to determine if there's anything wrong with your breasts. With breast pathologies, the earlier you catch wind of something, the better your odds become. You'll find out a simple set of diagrams and instructions that you can follow to put your mind at ease or go see a doctor in due time. Dr. Maybell perfected this method while working for two years at the prestigious European Institute of Oncology in Milan, Italy. You'll also learn how to pop a shoulder, hip, finger, or some other joint back into place. These types of accidents tend to happen more and more after a certain age. Have you ever heard of using leeches as medicine? They are an extremely effective and easy to use remedy for preventing a wound from festering and speeding up healing. As long as you're not squeamish, that is. Another thing they're good for is high blood pressure. Because they decrease the amount of blood flowing, they also lower the stress on your arteries. You'll also find out 25 remedies made from th things you usually throw away. One man's trash is another man's treasure, as they say. For, for example, you can turn the eggshells you throw away into calcium pills that will be greatly appreciated in times of need when food becomes scarce. Ever had a really bad toothache that just wouldn't go away? A dental infection can become quickly very dangerous, so you want to know how to take care of it the right way. Maybell recently went through something similar during the lockdown. She had a very painful tooth abscess, and because the dental clinics were closed, she had to become her own dentist. The full details of the procedure and the anesthetic she used and that you should stockpile are inside the home doctor. You'll also find out the only way to tell if your arrhythmia is benign or dangerous. Some changes in heart rate and rhythm are normal during sleep, and physical activity, and moments of stress. But other times, an irregular heart rhythm or arrhythmia may be a serious problem which, left untreated, can lead to cardiac arrest or stroke. The way you decide if it's time to call 911 is by looking at the symptoms of dangerous arrhythmias, which never appear for milder versions. These are shortness of breath, dizziness, lightheadedness, near fainting or fainting, and mild chest pain. If you feel your heart beating too fast or too slow, and also experience at least a few of these symptoms, call an ambulance immediately. You'll also discover how to remove an ingrown nail yourself. In a situation where medical help is hard to come by, an ingrown nail can be a, can be a serious disinfection if you don't remove it. Strangely enough, it's even worse if you remove it the wrong way. Don't properly bandage and sterilize the area afterward. That's why if you get this in this situation, it, it would be nice to have the home doctor around to guide you along the way. Do you know why you should always keep chewing gum close by in case your ears start to hurt? It's simple, really. When you chew the right kind of gum, you not only decrease pressure inside the ear by continuous jaw movements, but also ward off ear infections. That's because of a sweetener called xylitol. You'll also discover what to do if you're experiencing pain in your abdomen. 
It's called an abdominal evaluation. And you've probably undergone it before when going to a doctor for a checkup. Inside the home doctor, you'll have a complete diagram with nine sections of the abdomen that upon palpation should reveal exactly what the problem really is and how to best solve it. You'll also discover which two types of migraines are most common and the simple but essential things you need to do to identify which one you have and how to get rid of it. Especially if it's a recurrent one like once a month, you need to read this chapter. This could also be a sign of something more serious. You'll also discover exactly how to deal with gunshot, stab, or other typical wounds caused by violent protesters or rioters. As you likely know, Venezuela has had lots of them in the past few years. And our country is no stranger to such events either. And don't forget, we don't know what the future holds. As a surgeon, Maybell worked a lot of ER shifts and it's probably not an injury she hasn't seen. By learning how to deal with them when there are no hospitals available, you can take care of yourself and your family in times of need. You'll also discover how to keep your immune system healthy. I'm not talking about the run of the mill things that you find on the internet. I am talking about the things that doctors do to keep their immunity high after they come in close contact with sick people. Things that you can also do at home to protect your family. You'll find out the old mustard oil and salt remedy that is used to restore gums and remove plaque from your teeth. Salt acts as a mild abrasive that helps remove stains and brighten teeth. It also contains a natural source of fluoride, which is a bonus for your teeth and gums. On the other hand, mustard oil helps strengthen your gums and make it easier to remove the plaque. So instead of spending a fortune on dental implants, why not use this method and others to preserve and strengthen your gums and teeth? You'll also discover 10 non-medical items that you must stockpile for darker times. A few months after Venezuela's economy collapsed, these 10 items became more precious than gold, and they could be traded for almost anything you needed, including medicine. Unfortunately for Maybell, she had only two of the 10, so she didn't fare as well as you might if you get them all today. Don't worry, they are not at all expensive when society is still functioning. You'll also find out about some of the ingredients that you have in your kitchen right now, which, when mixed the right way, can help you sleep like a baby again even if you're dealing with an enormous amount of stress and anxiety. If you're taking sleeping pills from time to time, even melatonin, you should try to replace them with this recipe instead, as it's natural and completely safe. You'll also rediscover 40 bizarre home remedies our grandparents taught us that actually work and doctors use or prescribe. These have once again become very popular, very important for people who have no option left but to treat themselves at home. For example, you can tackle most headaches using a potato, deal with bug bites using toothpaste, lower fever with vinegar and socks, make cough syrup from black radish, and many others. You'll also learn how to use a two-pronged approach to help resolve pink eye and other bacterial eye infections. Did you know that there is a sort of natural doxycycline to be found as close as your own backyard? The plant is called Usnia, and it's popularly known as Old Man's Beard. This wild plant grows all over North America, and once you gather some, you'll find out how to turn it into an antibiotic tincture to greatly increase its potency and shelf life. Another thing you'll discover is how to make your own cabbage bandages. Cabbage leaves are great and anti-inflammatory and contain compounds that also draw out poison or pus from a wound and speed up the healing. This isn't even a folk remedy. Maybell was taught this in medical school and confirmed it in her practice later on in life. You'll also learn by keeping a small stockpile of Listerine in your medicine cabinet. It can be a very good idea. In the hospitals of Venezuela, they used a lot of Listerine for various types of bacterial and fungal infections, wounds, gangrene, and diabetic foot with satisfactory results, according to Maybell. And even all of that is just the tip of the iceberg of what you'll find inside the home doctor. This book is absolutely massive with over 300 pages filled with practical tips, precise diagrams, and step-by-step -step procedures 
that will allow you to stay healthy and help others while society crumbles. The medical system can be put under enormous strain even when things are still somewhat normal. An unforeseen event will always push it over the edge. You'll be left in the back of a huge line to see a doctor while you're hurting or in need of urgent medical assistance. With the home doctor, you can become a home doctor self. Home docs are self-reliant people who take care of themselves and their families when the situation demands it. That's what I wanted to achieve with this book, to empower normal people with no previous medical experience to take care of themselves, their loved ones, and even their communities when doctors and hospitals are not an option anymore. If you decide to place a copy of The Home Doctor, Practical Medicine for Every Household on your bookshelf today, there are two additional gifts in store for you, all still free of charge for now. The first one is called Wild Edibles You Can Forage For or Find Around Your House. These are the life-saving herbs that people of Venezuela ate when they couldn't afford to buy food from the market anymore. These plants grow all over North America, and I bet they're also found around your house. With this bonus, you'll be able to identify your own 24-7 backyard supermarket. The best part is few people in the U.S. know about these plants and how nutritious they really are, so you won't have to deal with a lot of competition foraging for them. You'll also receive a second gift called Natural Healing Secrets of Native Americans. In this one, you'll rediscover the powerful natural medicines that natives relied on well before the dawn of modern medicine. In a medical collapse, they will be worth their weight in gold. With this, you'll never be short of medicine no matter what happens and will always have a way left to help yourself or a loved one in need. The plants they used are still abundant in America all you need to know is how to properly identify them and turn them into tinctures, salves, poultices, decoctions, elixirs, and many other remedies that the natives used with great success for hundreds of years. As I promised, if you choose to get the home doctor today, you'll also get these two exclusive bonuses that are worth at least $29 each for free and unlimited access to the members area where you can ask me or Dr. Maybell anything at any time. We'll be there to answer your questions and to help you if you need any clarification on anything inside the book. And the best part is that you don't need to wait for the collapse of modern healthcare to make good use of your book. The medical self-reliance found inside will probably end up saving you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars over the next few years. With that in mind, let me ask you, how much do you think the home doctor is worth? How do you put a price on your health or the health of someone you love? Some pharmaceutical companies sell their drugs for outrageous sums of money, sometimes thousands of dollars, just because they can. I wanted this book to be in the hands of as many people as possible because it could save a lot of lives. For a one-time payment of just $37, you'll receive the massive medical guide that is the home doctor and the two bonuses. You'll have a full 60 days to try the home doctor, practical medicine for every household. If at any time during that 60 days, you're not completely satisfied with the results, send me an email and I'll give you back every cent. It's as simple as that. Also, if you use this book to take care of your current health issues, you don't end up saving at least $37. I'll send you a full refund. No questions asked. That's my personal guarantee to you. Think for yourself, act according to your own judgment, and, and learn what you need to keep yourself and your family healthy from this day forward. So there you have it. No matter where you live in the world, a collapse is never out of the question. History shows us that much. What better advice can you get than from a frontline doctor working in a country that's been dealing with this for the last couple of years. I've shown you why going to a hospital can be a very bad idea, the best way to stockpile antibiotics and other medicines, why you should extract medicines from plants, and the vital do-it-yourself medical procedures and knowledge you must have on hand. So now the choice is yours. The way I see it, you can do one of these three things. First, you could disregard everything I've told you and hope that a medical collapse will never happen. 
Looking back, a lot of people made the same mistake in Venezuela, and in America too, only to pay the ultimate price when reality hit. The second thing you could do is to try to discover everything found inside the home doctor on your own. But let me tell you, if you're not a doctor or no one willing to help, that will take months or years and probably cost you a lot more than $37. But I think that the third option is the best one for you and your family. Take Dr. Maybell's knowledge as it's written down inside the home doctor and use it to become a home doctor yourself. You'll know exactly what medicines to stockpile for your needs, where to find them on the cheap, and how to perform simple but life-saving procedures from the comfort of your own home. The home doctor is really all you need to take your health into your own hands from this moment on. If you have the foresight to purchase it today, this book will protect you and your loved ones for many years to come. And there's absolutely no risk in giving it a try and having something that few people ever get when it comes to health care, a real alternative. I wish you all the best and I want to thank you for staying with me until the end of this short presentation. God bless you and your entire family. I'm Claude Davis.